Welcome to More Non-Dues Revenue, a semi-monthly Zoominar podcast series sponsored by Chamber Marketing Partners, where we interview Chamber of Commerce leaders and visionaries to share their creative, entrepreneurial strategies for generating non-dues revenue. Catch us live twice a month or see prior Zoominars at www.morenondewsrevenue.com. This episode is titled, Is Print Dead? The Relevance of Chamber of Commerce Publications. We'll cover four main topics. Why produce a printed publication? How to determine an audience and what's your message? What's the non-dues revenue potential of printed publications? And finally, is print dead? Our sponsor today is Chamber Marketing Partners, generating substantial non-dues revenue for Chambers of Commerce publications without using a turnkey publisher. The Chamber gets total control, full financial transparency, and uses local vendors. Some chambers have seen returns up to 30% from their award-winning publications. Visit www.chambermarketingpartners.com to learn more and follow us on LinkedIn. I'm your host, Ed Berzminski, president of Chamber Marketing Partners. Connect with me on LinkedIn, and now let's get started. Joining us for this power panel discussion are CEOs from three very different chambers of commerce. Rhonda Zunker, IOM, is the CEO and president of the Bolverde Spring Branch Chamber of Commerce that's about 30 minutes north of San Antonio, Texas. Having developed a long-standing business relationship as a former vice president of a bank in the Bolverde area, it was a natural progression for Rhonda to become CEO of the chamber. Stephen Rosansky is CEO of the Newport Beach Chamber of Commerce, an upscale coastal community in Southern California's Orange County. Steve is an attorney, a real estate broker, a former Newport Beach mayor and city councilman, all prior to becoming CEO of the chamber. Lisa Hermes, IOM and CCE, is the president and CEO of the McKinney Chamber of Commerce in the Northeast Dallas area in Texas. Lisa has spent most of her professional career in the chamber of commerce world. So we have a couple of business people who uh, prior to the chamber were business people and somebody who spent her professional career in the chamber world. And now for full disclosure, each of our guests have been clients of Chamber Marketing Partners for many years. And I'm so excited to have the three of you join us on the show. So let's jump right in. I'll ask each of you to first briefly tell us who you are and the chamber you're with. Tell us a little bit about your community. I'll then ask you to ask you to answer the same question as it pertains to your specific situation. So tell us a little bit about your community and why you produce a printed publication. Let's start with Rhonda. Hi, good morning and welcome everyone. And thank you for joining us today. Um, as he said, the Bulverde Spring Branch area is a bedroom community to San Antonio. We're about 20, 25 miles north of San Antonio. And um, we were a nice little sleepy community until um, a lot of people in um, the United States decided to find us. Um, about uh, three or four years ago, Kamau County that we're in became one of the top five fastest growing counties in the nation. So we have been experiencing some major growth. Um, some of the old, uh, Bulverde Spring Ranch was a large ranching community for many years. And so a lot of the old ranches are now being sold uh, and being developed into higher density communities. And so we're seeing a massive growth. We're, we're looking at doubling the size of the city of Bulverde in probably the next two to three years. So uh, currently we have about 50,000 people in the 216 square miles that we kind of consider our market area. We have a large military population and a larger retirement area. So our average person, our average household is in the 40, late 40s, early 50s. Uh, with the surge of higher density, we're seeing younger people move into the community. So, but with that, print is definitely, people want something to touch and feel and, and uh, it's been very popular in our area. Okay, Lisa, I'll ask you the same question. Tell us a little bit about your community and why you produce a printed publication. Sure, thank you, Ed, and thank you for inviting me today. I'm, it's always fun to get together with other chamber uh, professionals within our industry and be able to share. So McKinney, Texas, uh, we are, as Ed said, we are uh, northeast of Dallas, uh, but if you've been a part of the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex area, uh, it's a it's a it's a sprawling um, almost looks like one entire city. <laughs> 
with 7 million people, um, but it's not. Um, there's multiple cities and, and multiple counties that make up our, our area. Um, we uh, are also a very fast growing community. We usually make the list of the top five fastest growing cities. Um, we currently have about 200,000 residents and at build out, depending on density, we're going to be closer to 400,000. Um, we, our median age is actually a, a, a young uh, community. So uh, it's somewhere in the mid thirties is, is where we typically see our median age um, for our community. So uh, we started off, um, you know, we're the county seat of Collin County, which is um, off a very fast growing county. Uh, we border Plano, Frisco, if you've heard of those places, Allen. Um, also very fast growing communities. Uh, but we also, as we grew, we, we started off more of a, a suburban uh, community with people commuting into Dallas and some of the other major employers. But over time, as we've grown, uh, we also, our employment base has grown. So our largest employer is Raytheon. Uh, they have their aerospace uh, and aeronautics uh, headquarters in McKinney. Um, but we also have manufacturing, we've got financial services industry, so kind of across the, the, the whole gambit of, of companies. Um, and, you know, I know we're going to get more into this about is, is print dead. And um, what Ed did not share with you is, I, I, in full disclosure, is that before joining the Chamber World uh, in 2006, uh, I, my background was actually in print journalism. So, Oh, I didn't know that. I do have a little bit of a affinity towards print and I do take the Sunday New York Times in print. Uh, but I think what we're gonna talk about and learn today is that people consume information in so many different ways. And so you can't put your eggs in one basket. It can't be all online, it can't be all print. So is print dead? Absolutely not. It's learning, I think, how best to uh, utilize it and in what capacity to utilize it in your community to make it make sense so that it's meeting the needs of your members, it's meeting the needs of your community, and it's also um, also helping with non-dues revenue. So I guess we'll, we'll dive more into that a little bit later. Yes, we will. Thank you, Lisa. Steve, I'll ask you the same uh, question. Tell us a little bit about your community and tell us why you produce a publication. Oh, you're muted. Sorry about that. No uh, New Newport Beach uh, kind of slides in between, I think, the, the other two chambers, at least population-wise. We're about 85,000 residents. We're an old community. Newport Beach was uh, incorporated in 1906. Um, our chamber actually was formed in 1907, so we kind of grew up with the community. Um, but uh, it's reflective of uh, the area here. We're uh, a beach town to a large degree, very, uh, very uh, focused on tourism. Uh, so restaurants, hotels, and things like that are um, you know, a major part of uh, business life here in town. We have a big harbor, one of the biggest uh, small boat harbors in the West Coast, uh, which is uh, you know, the focal point of a lot of the community. But it's an upper uh, income community and prob probably a little, excuse, a little older than your communities do. Um, it's a wealthy community, high, you know, I mean, if you don't have a couple million dollars, you're not buying a house in Newport Beach, basically. And uh, these days, I, I live in the poor end of town, and I think my house is worth about a million three. <laughs> so you can imagine. But uh, so, yeah, it's an upper income demographic. And then in addition to the tourism, you know, we have a lot of professionals. So it tends to be, you know, attorneys, wealth management, doctors, accountants, you know, lawyers, um, things like that. And then, yeah, we have a good smattering of retail. We have a regional mall in town, Fashion Island, and, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, it, but it, in many ways, though, it's a small town feel here. And we, we like to say that we're a town of villages. And, um, you know, over the years, these villages have kind of merged together and formed Newport Beach. And so, um, you know, that our, and our chamber's reflective of the community, I think, as far as the membership goes. Um, Why do you produce a publication? Well, the publication, you know, and we're going to cover it, I think, in some of your later questions, but serves many purposes for us. Um, you know, I, I came here eight years ago. We were sort of in transition. We, we had outsourced our publication before um, to a company that had just done everything, sold the advertising, collected the money, basically just sent us a check, and we really had nothing to do with it. 
uh, for various reasons that didn't work out at that point in time. That's why we came to Chamber Marketing Partners. But, um, you know, we find that, you know, it, it, whether it's it serves as our directory, which, you know, used to be just a little booklet. And now it's part of a magazine publication. Um, it, uh, we use it as a handout piece, which I think is important. I mean, you can't give out an email or, or email a directory if you're standing in front of someone. I was actually with uh, one of the general managers of uh, one of the major hotels in town yesterday afternoon. Um, it was my first meeting with him. He's a new, he just started in December. And I brought the, the our, we call it the business guide, Newport Beach business guide. We brought, I brought a copy and handed it to him so he can see exactly you know, what we're about, what, what kind of things we do. So it serves as that, you know, almost like a business card in a certain sense. We use it at events where we'll put one, we do an economic forecast event once a year. We'll have uh, last, well, last time we did it in person. I mean, you know, it's a little different here in California. Things are not as in person as maybe as in Texas are. But, uh, you know, last in-person event that we did uh, in October of 2019, we had almost 400 people there. And we had a copy of our business guide at each place setting as a takeaway. And so something that they can kind of look through and know a little bit more about our chamber. So, you know, and most importantly, it makes money for us. So, <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, we don't, we don't do too many things that lose money here if we can avoid it. So. Well, thank you, Steve. And actually that kind of guides me to the next question. Uh, and we'll keep with you. What is the purpose of your publication of your business guide? Who's the specifically? Who's the audience, and what do you want to say to them? What do you how, how do you want to connect with them? Uh, well, there's different audiences. I mean, we you know we we have approximately 600 members now here as a uh, at our chamber, and so you know when the guide's published, each one of them is mailed a copy. Um, all of our advertisers and many of them are chamber members. We actually open it up to non chamber. Uh, members to advertise in there as well. So they'll get copies of it. Uh, we print about 15,000 of them and distribute them to um, uh, homes as well as businesses that are not members of the chamber, obviously, but as a way to um, you know, provide the advertising um, value for the advertisers that are there. But also, like you said, it has our business directory in there. So it's a way for you know, our, our, our business members to get you know, if someone needs a plumber or a lawyer or whatever, they might look in there. Um, uh, just a quick anecdote. A couple of years ago, we sold the cover to a woman who um, she calls herself the healing chef. And honestly, she paid about, I think we charged $6,000 for the cover that year. And I thought, well, geez, you know, she's probably wasting her money. I didn't think she's going to get a lot of bang for a buck out of it. She said she got more clients out of that. She was so happy that she was thinking about doing it again the next year. So it really, you know, it really works. It gave her some visibility that she didn't have in the community. Pick, she picked up clients, you know, based on it. And so, you know, it, uh, it, it checks a lot of boxes for us. You know, it lives on, on, on um, you know, coffee tables and doctor's offices and things like that because ours is a, is really a magazine that has a directory in it, you know, at the back. And so, you know, it has a little bit of life past, oh, you know, from the mailbox to the, to the trash can, you know, sure. the trash can. So it sounds like it's kind of a general purpose publication. For yeah, we use it for a lot of different things. Uh, Rhonda, let me ask you the same thing. For your particular community, what's the purpose of your, your guide, your publication? Who's the audience and what do you want to say to them? We have kind of um, decided our audience is the people moving into our community or looking at our community. So if a business is looking to move into our community, it's a resource. We, we make sure that we include, you know, the housing in our area, our education sources in our area. We include things about what's to do that we're not a big tourist area which during COVID, we were really excited that we weren't a big tourist area because those are the areas that have really been hit hard. Um, and we've been able to survive quite well. But uh, we really kind of gear it towards, hey, I'm moving into the area. Uh, back when I was in banking, that was people would come into the bank to open their account and they'd say, tell me about the area. So I kind of drew on that a lot when we did our first guide. When I came to the chamber, it's been seven years now, um, that was what we were looking for is something that we could provide to the financial institutions, to the builders and the people moving into the area or that were new in the area, one place that they could look at all the different things. 
something our area is in lack of is a central source of information. We don't have a local newspaper. We don't have a local radio station. Most people get their news out of San Antonio, so it talks nothing about businesses or things that are in our area. Um, so that is what has really become a, a great source. Uh, we have several welcoming companies in our area that go out and do welcome baskets, and they used to go to people's homes and do this. Now they're kind of a little different, but uh, they still deliver, and they come and pick up cases of them to take out to the new residents in the community so that they can introduce them to all the different types of businesses in our community. You know, if they have kids, they learn more about the education options out here. If they, you know, the restaurant, we have a restaurant guide in the last one, uh, mm -hmm. things like that, that gives them a big picture because, and, and the biggest thing was the real generic map we did because we cover two cities and we're spread out all along Highway 281. So you have the old village of Bulverde and then you have five miles down the road, kind of the business section of Bulverde. And then another five or six miles down the road is where Spring Branch is. But our mailing addresses kind of overlap each other. And so people get really confused. So that map in the middle of the guide has become, people pick it up and they say, wait, I need one of those books because I need that map that's in the middle. So that kind of added to this last year is the first year we've actually printed a printed map of our community. And it has gone over with a lot of uh, interest because it was another print. Everyone's like, oh, we'll just Google it. But being able to hold that map out and actually get a whole view and understand that, you know, where everything is in conjunction with where they live has been really, really beneficial. So it sounds to me like your particular purpose for your publication is a newcomer's guide. You're, you're, uh, there's a lot of development going on. Uh, mm -hmm. The developers are big advertisers in your book. Uh, and you're reaching out to newcomers to attract them to your community from quality of life perspective and uh, reaching down to San Antonio to bring them up to your area and talk about yes. that. And that and, and with businesses moving that are looking to move into our area, we don't have a lot of large business and a lot of that. We have most of our businesses are small mom and pops, but we also have uh, businesses that are looking to move here for maybe 20, 30, 40 employees, and they're looking for quality of life. And this gives them a great overall look of our community so that people know we do have some walking trails, we do have parks things like that. So we really highlight those types of things that people would be looking for in a community. And it's all in one place. In Lisa, one place. let me ask you the same question. What is the purpose of your publication? Who's the audience and what are you trying to tell them? Um, yeah, great, great question because I think um, we're very unique in, in, uh, in the sense that um, we used to publish a, a magazine um, on a monthly basis. Our, our chamber actually owned a publishing company for a number of years uh, that was started back in um, the early like uh, 2000s. And then later um, as we saw that we were trying to compete with where we're a little bit different, Rhonda, we, we have um, multiple magazines that are now produced in our community. Um, we have multiple uh, newspapers um, that reach reach our, our, our community. We actually took a step back from some print publications, but we reevaluated and said, which ones make sense for us to do? Um, we're spinning our wheels trying to compete with a monthly magazine that made sense back in 2006. Uh, but in 2020, what makes sense? And so that's uh, how we entered our, you know, our relationship. I, I had known Ed before. I've worked in other chambers where we, we had published our own uh, resource guide directory. Um, uh, I've used other turnkey type operators as well. But um, we, we kind of stepped back and said, okay, what, what is the purpose? And the purpose is to tell our story as our community um, and that it has a shelf life of a year so that if somebody walks in and they're new to the community, they can, Rhonda, to your point, um, they can look at and see healthcare, education, what do we have going on from an event standpoint, from a community-wide event standpoint, what's the real estate market look like here? Uh, just all that kind of information that they can have at their fingertips. 
I tend to see it, you know, back in the day, it was, it was totally our directory and it was all about getting our members in the, in there and connecting. And I, and I do think that that is an important element. Um, but because of the component that we have online where we're able to update that more quickly, I think people really use where we really use the guide more from the, the front part of it, which is the editorial and the display advertising and really showcasing who we are as a community. Um, we've also used it. Um, so we, we put it, we actually deliver um, We have a partnership with our, uh, our, our waste management company um, in, in our community. So we, we put new resident bags together. That's a opportunity for our businesses to showcase what they do and connect with new residents. And so we stuff a hundred uh, a month. And in that bag, we include obviously the, the, the resource guide um, as part of that. Um, but we also use it with our, we work with some of our larger companies and companies that are moving here. And they said, you know, we're trying to make, you know, we want to, we want to bring um, our employees here to McKinney and they want to know more about the community. Um, one thing I really kind of wanted to, to talk about too and make sure that we got across was how useful it was, even when companies, and of course our area is a little bit different because we are connected with a lot of other communities like Plano and Frisco and um, a great example of this was when Toyota moved their headquarters from California, sorry about that, um, to Plano, Texas, and they did community-wide fairs for their employees. They had their employees coming in for, I mean, this was like six months. They would have them come in on every Saturday and Thursday, and we would set up our booth and try to sell our community. And what better way to do that than with a guide that you can you can hand them that information, which is also available online. All, all of this is online, but you really could have a conversation. You could like open it up. Um, we also print a separate map. Um, and that was super useful because I could get a Sharpie out and start marking places and showing people where things were. Uh, and, and they could get a bigger, a better visual. And so Rhonda, I, I think that's a great idea to include that in your, your publication. Cause I think, uh, as much as I use my phone to give me directions of where to go, being able to see something in a bigger picture and is, is really important. And particularly with newcomers, if they're looking to move to an area, you know, okay, so I'm moving to McKinney or I'm moving to Newport Beach or I'm moving to Bulverde or Spring Branch. There are different neighborhoods in those communities. So you can say I'm moving there, but where? So you can highlight the different neighborhoods, especially if you include the map in a publication, you can highlight the different neighborhoods and then have some editorial to talk about those neighborhoods. So people kind of get an idea of what that place is, uh, the community is like and what areas are like and that kind of stuff and focus on, obviously focus on the positive uh, parts. You know, and, and the other thing that I think is, is you can really think outside the box. And I know Ed, when working with you, we've, we've done some different things like, um, we did a, a, a business to business guide at one point. Um, we tried that, we added that into our publication and we were able to kind of, to play around with that, but we also started another publication. So while we, while our magazine our lifestyle magazine went away, we started doing more niche publications and we have a senior services Alliance and they, um, their businesses that cater to the senior population and aging children of seniors. And we, for two years, we tried to do a symposium um, because we wanted to connect the businesses with the people who might need their, their, their services. And we also wanted to provide education and information to seniors. Well, we had nobody coming. I mean, it was just like, it, I mean, it was just a lot of work with no return. Now we do a senior resource guide in addition. So it's another publication that we produce. We do make some money on it. And it's a way that we're able to get the information in the hands of the seniors where they don't have to show up at an event. So, so I, you're, you're able to segment your market even more and create a new publication to target that particular segment right. of the market and connect with mm -hmm. them. Brilliant. Yeah. So we added print back, you know, to our to our portfolio of what we provide, um, and took away an event and added print to it. So it's thinking outside the box. Rhonda, I want to ask you, and then I'll ask uh, the others too. Uh, with printed publications, a, be a business directory, I, this just kind of came up for me a thought. Printed publications, a directory is kind of a dinosaur, just a directory in and of itself. So mm -hmm. a lot of chambers that produce publications, particularly those who do it themselves, 
they fall into the trap of picking up content from the prior edition and just tweaking it. You know, we just, we'll just do what we did last year and we'll do it again. What's your strategy for keeping the editorial fresh and relevant in your guide each time? Well, and we have been a little guilty of that, but we try to make sure that throughout the year, we look at what questions do we get a lot at the chamber office? What questions or what new developments, what new, we just like this past year, we got our, well, two years ago, we got our very first apartment complex uh, out here. We have all of these single family homes and I think over 92% are owner occupied. So no duplexes, no apartments, nothing. So we finally got our first apartment complex that was coming in. And so we made a big splash about that because we wanted to let people know now there was that option out here, which a lot of people didn't know about. So we had our senior, um, we have a senior housing unit that came in this last year and we kind of highlighted that. We usually throughout the year look at you know, what are some major things that have changed out here? What are some major things that we get a lot of questions about or that have changed and try to incorporate that into it? Or a couple of times we've highlighted our, our we have a state park that is just uh, on the outskirts of our area. That is, that is a wonderful feature out here. Um, we have Natural Bridge Caverns, which is a wonderful feature. They're both on the outskirts. So we kind of have added uh, each year something a little different. This last year, we added the restaurant guide. A couple of years before that, we had added uh, more of the tourist top 10 things to do here in our community. So it's just kind of the questions that we get throughout the year that people are asking us or coming to us for, we try to incorporate that into the guide for the next year. Steve, same question to you. How do you keep the content of your guide uh, every year relevant and updated? What do you do? to do that? So we actually um, hire, um, well, in the past, it's been a, a local woman here who's kind of well connected in the community to write a couple of articles for, or, you know, and they're always new articles that, you know, revolves around things that happen here in Newport Beach. So whether it's a real estate related article or, a, you know, uh, tourism based, whatever it is, we, we, you know, we try and refresh that. So it's a brand, a couple brand new articles every year. Um, you know, I try and refresh like the, 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 my little half page letter to the membership, you know, and not repeat everything exactly the same. So it's not like Groundhog's Day. I, I mean, some of the content is because it is more reference material than not. I mean, you can't really change that. Uh, but we try to move things around in the magazine, the look and feel of it, um, you know, even to the point where, uh, you know, we don't we move the sections around in the magazine so that they're not, uh, you know, the real estate's first and, you know, medical second and this is third. So it's, you know, it's, I'd say 50% is new content. Probably 50% is, is, you know, a rehash of other things that really just are not going to change. I mean, you know, certain things just won't change. Sure. But uh, yeah. So we try and keep it fresh that way. New pictures were very visual and our, mm -hmm. as most people are, and so we, you know, we do, when, again, when we were having them, when, you know, we, we do a lot of events here in Newport Beach and the chamber does a dozen major events, including a Christmas boat parade that runs five nights in the harbor. And so we always hire a professional photographer um, to take pictures at all the events. So we have a pretty good catalog of, of uh, pictures and artwork to deal, to, to work from um, or to draw on. And so we all, you know, it's not like you'll, you're, gonna, you're never going to see the same pictures year after year. It's yeah. always something new and fresh. And, and so that's how we kind of keep it, you know, relevant. Lisa, same question to you. How do you keep your content current, relevant? What do you think of as you're, as you're thinking about articles and that kind of stuff? Uh, so that, you know, our communities are all dynamic. A community doesn't stay the same, right? It lives and breathes and it changes and that there's things that are new and things that may, um, you know, uh, like may go away, you know? So uh, the chamber is the pulse. It usually has the pulse of the community. So we, we sit around, we have an editorial meeting and um, to your point, Steve, there's the reference stuff that, you know, it doesn't really change as change. much try to keep that the same but then again we use it as an opportunity to tell our, our community story and so 
they, we can highlight different aspects of that as we know that new things are coming online or there's um, something, you know, like when we talked about healthcare. So obviously we want to have the reference material so you know where the hospitals are and where are they located and where's the emergency rooms and all those kinds of things that are relevant to people who are new to the community or may have been here and there's new, new hospitals that have been built. But we also want to say, well, how do we highlight the, the wellness opportunities? Um, because we're seeing that industry industry grow and it fits in with healthcare. So we start really thinking outside the box. And Steve, I think your point about the visuals is so important. And I think that's what, when you talk about print, I think that's the, the piece of print that is important and why it isn't going to die. Because it gives you an opportunity to aesthetically put a a visual of your community together and in a way that you can't do um, online. Um, Online, obviously we, we, we we run three different websites. Um, So we think it's important. We think that's, that's a huge critical component um, to our communications efforts. Um, But that printed piece really does between infographics and the way you lay out your book and you design your book and the pictures you take and how you you showcase your community um, is just a unique way of doing it. And and uh, that's one of the things we do is we sit around the table and we say, okay, what what can we add? What's new? And uh, and we too we we hire a local um, uh, writer. Um, so we're able to help employ people, some of our chamber members, um, to be part of the process with us. And um, that's one less thing for our staff to have to do. As you know, we all have our plates are full. So um, there's, there's lots of resources out there locally that you can, you can. So since images came up, I do want to just uh, share for the audience um, some of the images from uh, your publications. I hadn't planned on it, but I just brought it up. So I'll share the screen. And then after that, I want to get to the question that everybody's kind of wondering about is how important and how much non-dues revenue are we uh, generating here? So in the meantime, let me just get this um, here, sharing this so I can share. uh, Can you, I can't see it. Can you guys see the Bulverde cover? Yes, Yes, sir. So Mm -hmm. there's the the Bulverde Spring Branch Guide cover. Talk about an image. So again, Rhonda's attracting people to come to her community and quality of life. And... (laughs) Rhonda, I'm going to hop in my car and head that way. (laughs) I'll be there for happy hour. There you go. Another one here is uh, Steve's at Newport Beach, Newport Beach Business. Uh, And you've got the healthcare industry. So you've got Hogue Hospital here. And you've got some of the um, uh, doctors and officials at Hogue Hospital. And this actually publication... Uh, went back into sales during COVID and completed and delivered during COVID. Uh, and actually, all of you guys uh, did that. So this was a um, uh, overcoming our challenges together. And then for Lisa's publication, oh wow, an image. love it. So love again, it. You know, something vibrant, something that, that talks about uh, your community. So let me stop sharing my screen and uh, stop share. Okay, and get back to this. So um, let's talk about the non-dues revenue from publications. Uh, you know, what's the contribution? You don't have to necessarily share actual numbers unless you want to, percentage-wise. Uh, Rhonda, let's start with you. How, what is, how does the publication contribute to non-dues revenue for your chamber? Well, it definitely helped this last year because we added the map and uh, printed that, it was a first time event. And being that we didn't know what to expect as far as ad sales would go and everything, that added a net, it was was between 13 and 15,000 that that added to us. And and that was a nice little boost. Our uh, our regular publication, we were down in ad sales, which we, we, what we budgeted for based on the fact that it was COVID, uh, we weren't really gonna push the, the, community guide this year we were going to look at just maybe putting it off well the advertisers were calling us going did I miss out did I what did how did I miss that y'all are selling ads for the community guide this year so we decided to go ahead and do it and set a low threshold enough to where we'd make some money but weren't you know just really going out full steam on it and we oversold our goal by over 10,000 so 
We did really well with it this year. I think we netted around 16, 18,000. It's not our biggest fundraiser, but for our small mom and pop businesses, it's really tough. Uh, I would love to have a big hospital in my area that would come and, and cough up money to be my front cover. Uh, kind of a story in that is since day one, a small um, pet grooming, pet kennel, pet training area out here has bought the inside front cover, uh, both first the inside cover and the next page for the last, well, six, seven years that we've been doing the guide. And he just thinks that's the best thing. And I told him, well, why don't we split that advertising and do some online and some there? Nope, I want to be in your print publication. I don't care about that online stuff. And again, that's a lot based on age-wise out here. Um, and that's where we find a lot is that people are really interested in getting that physical book that they can put their hands on. So, but yes, I wanted to share our, our neighbor down the road. Now, we do contract out because we don't really have anyone immediately here in our community that uh, does publications like this. Uh, we have some printers that we've used recently uh, in the area, but Maggie has um, one of my partner chambers right down the road here in, in the church Cibolo area. She does hers more in-house. She has a bigger staff and, and they have a lot of um, hotels in their area and they get a lot of uh, hot tax money to put out a publication. And she was showing that she's netting about 40,000 on hers after delivery. Uh, they're mailing out like 18,000 of them to people in the community and they're still netting about 40,000. And for their map, they netted around 40,000 also. And they printed one this last year. So they're using, um, you know, a different method of doing it, but I don't have the expertise. I don't have the knowledge and I don't have people that are right here in our community that we would want to use. So it's been a blessing to partner with, um, with Ed and Chris and Scott and their team. They are our members out here love working with them in the back office and it's been a blessing and we've really appreciated it prior to me coming and us pushing this guide. We did the business directory where, yeah, the local newspaper did it and they sold ads to all of our people and they gave us nothing. It was just, we got the guide and that was, or the business directory. And that was it. There was no, no money for us. So any amount of money has been a benefit, but, uh, it does add nicely to our budget, so. Thank you, Rhonda. And I just want to tell the audience too. The, the, he didn't pay sharing, me to say that. They're sharing about chamber marketing partners, but this isn't about us. This is really about the value of printed publications to these chambers and sharing information with you mm -hmm. about how they're working and how they're generating non-dues revenue. Thank you, Rhonda, I very much appreciate that. But um, uh, Steve, how important is the non-dues revenue from the publication to your chamber, what does it contribute, and you know, uh, how does it fit in for your budgeting? Uh, it's well, I mean, just I'll put some numbers on it. We sell about, I think this last year was close to sixty thousand in advertising in the guide. We probably netted ten or twelve thousand dollars off of that. Now we do pay uh, a commission, twenty percent commission on all the ad sales to a, a rep, so that we don't have to deal with that here. I don't know if that's how you guys do it, your other chambers, but. Um, you know, I mean, the, the money, the 10, 10 to $12,000 is not a huge part of our budget. I mean, we, we probably, well, again, pre COVID, we probably had about a $900,000 a year budget. So 10, you know, profit of $10,000 is not all that much money, but, um, it does add to the bottom line. It makes it worthwhile to do it. It, you know, the, the guide, as I said earlier, checks a lot of boxes for us so you know like when we made the decision to move forward this year and, and ed and i talked about it and i said well what's the break even on it because i wasn't even sure people would pay you know mm -hmm. this is back in april when we were shutting down i'm thinking like who am i going to sell ads to these restaurants are closed and these hotels i still have a hotel in town that hasn't reopened yet so who are we going to sell the you know these ads to but again, people were, were calling and we had some pre-COVID commitments already. And so I said, well, if we can at least just break even on the thing, let's go ahead and do it. And as it turned out, we did pretty okay on it. I'm very pleased with the result. And so, you know, as long as it's a minimal effort on our part, you know, the money is obviously important, but not the most important thing. Um, but I think in the six or seven years I've been involved with it, we've 
never lost money on it. We've always made money. So it's, right. uh, you know. Lisa, how about you? How important is the non-dues revenue contribution? How does it fit in? And um, if you care to share, what, how much does it generate for you? Sure. Um, so, so any non-dues revenue income is more than welcome at our Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Uh, so last year I looked at, our, I was looking at our numbers from 2020 and in the way ours, we published the beginning of 2020. So the, these numbers would have been more reflective of people securing ads in 2019. Um, but we netted, we, we were a little over, um, it was like 73,000 in income, but the net was, uh, about 14,000 and some change. Uh, this year, uh, Ed, as we talked about, we were kind of in the same boat as both of you when you were saying, do we go out? What are people going to spend money? What, what is the, the temperature like out there in our economy? And we're actually over budget right now um, in ad sales. I was very pleased to see um, the, the number. And so, and, and we're not done yet. So I think this year is going to actually uh, be uh, more profitable. Um, and when I looked at um, across the board, so I, when I think of our, our non-dues revenue from print, I include the, the community resource guide, which is our largest one. That's, like I said, last year was about 14,000. So that's somewhere in that ballpark. Our map will net anywhere between about 65 to 10,000 a year. And that we use a different company um, and they do a turnkey operation. So they have a person who comes in and sells and there's very minimal work to our staff. So while we could take that on in-house, that's also adding more to my staff. And, and I have them focused on other areas of things that we're working on at the chamber. So we felt like bringing in an outside company that we know and trust is good. And our senior resource guide is probably the one that makes the least amount of money, but it helps to generate new members, right? So, and all of these actually do. So there's the, it, it last year, our senior resource guide um, netted about uh, almost 4,000. So not, it's, it's not, I mean, like I said, I will take all of that. Um, but I think there's the hard amount of the, the dollars that come in, but then I also think about what else that we're getting from that. Because when I'm going and talking to a large company that's looking to up, you know, they want to know what we provide as a service to, to, to them. And their HR department says, I need lots of community resource guides because I'm not coming to your weekly networking event. I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to get employees here and find places for them. So they see that as a resource. Um, and so they, they up their membership with us and they find value in it. So there's, I think there's like the, you know, what you make, and then there's also the ancillary income that you could potentially make because you're adding so much value, uh, to, uh, to your community and to your members. So you touched on something that I, uh, just made me think of since each of you are doing your publication quote unquote in-house using a project management company. So the revenue is coming to you guys. Uh, the ad sale revenue is coming to you guys rather than to an outside publisher. Have you, how have you, or have you been able to leverage um, uh, membership levels or president circle or chairman circle to layer in ads into those sponsorships so that there's not, you know, going into their pockets multiple times throughout the year? Have any of you been able to leverage an ad into your chairman circle or sponsorship levels? Lisa? It's, yeah, so I'm happy to take this on. Um, so our highest level of membership at our chamber is 10,000 and that's our chairman circle. And a part of that package is that we have in our, in the section that's about business, we give them um, an opportunity to have a picture and a write up. Um, so that's part of, it's not, I mean, I guess it is like an advertisement, right? Um, they can still purchase an ad on top of that and some do, they choose to do so, but that's also layered into the guide uh, because we also see it as it's, it's telling the story of our business community because those who are investing at the highest level, both our chairman circle at 10,000 and then our sustaining partners are, that are 5,500, um, are all, they also get a smaller write-up and a smaller picture, but um, they're also in, involved in that. And I think it also shows the vibrancy of our, of our community. Um, in addition to, it helps to sell that membership at a higher level. Rhonda, how about you? There we go. Um, 
We have uh, tiered levels, and each level comes with a certain amount of dollars that are allotted for advertising and dollars allotted for sponsorship. So those are kind of my give me's. And there's a couple of them that go in ahead and commit at the beginning of the year for the, for the membership level because they know they're going to do a community guide ad and they just get some other perks along with it. So they go ahead and commit and put that money in. So um, yes, it, it does help with kind of maintaining and developing those relationships because they're looking at it going, well, if I'm going to give you this money throughout the year and it makes it so much nicer because I don't have to go and ask for more money each time we get them to commit up front. Our top level is our platinum and, and it's uh, 10,500 or 750 this year. And they get like 2,400 in advertising dollars that they can use however they want to throughout the year. And so most of them are doing a full page ad in the guide and that's taking a thousand of that money already. So that, that just opens it up. And then it's easier when we have something else come up, I just call and say, Hey, you want to use $500 of that money for this or that? And, and it works out well. So it has added a benefit for members to come into some of those levels. Plus we feature a page that just uh, features our, our top advertisers or our top sponsors. Makes sense. Steve, I'll ask you the same question. And I see that there are questions coming up on the Q&A. So Steve, you, uh, have you been able to include advertising as part of your sponsorship levels or membership levels? Um, you know, we, we don't do that, actually. And only because many of them are, are like, we have a leadership circle as well. Our, our top level now actually is 20,000. Um, our lot sitting number at 15,000. And 10 and five, but, um, and I thought about offering that as part of it, but frankly, many of them already are advertising. So they cut, write another check for it. So I'd be in a sense, cannibalizing something I, we already have. Um, not to say that we don't discuss it and that may be something we'll do in the future. We do put our leadership circle masthead. We take a full page in the guide to feature all the logos of the leadership circle members so that, you know, they do, even if they don't buy an ad, they're still represented there. And that's how we um, you know, deal with that. Okay. Thanks for that, you guys. It looks like we've got some questions. And we have Judy Hayes helping us with the questions. Uh, Judy, let's switch to um, Q&A. Uh, can you help us with the questions, Judy? Do we have some coming up? Absolutely. Um, could the panelists address the question of ad tracking and the ROI? Ad tracking and how do you how do you justify a return on the investment uh, through the ad tracking? So that's a really great question because to be honest with you, I don't know that we really have a good system of how we say you are getting this much in investment. A lot of it's more anecdotal, like testimonials of people who have purchased ads and uh, been been able to share that 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 the uh, their return on investment. And what I find it really interesting is that I think it's more difficult with print and maybe somebody has a better solution that they can share with us. What I find it interesting is we can track online advertising, right? Clicks and things like that. Right. And yet the online is harder to sell than the print. Mm -hmm. And that's been our experience. Um, I can say how many unique visitors I've had on our website. I can say how many impressions. I can say how many click-throughs. And uh, I, we still find that people prefer the print. And I don't have a hard number to say. I, I can tell you where we're distributing them. I can tell you how many. I can tell you know. I can I can share all of that. But yeah. So if somebody has another a better answer than me, please chime in. No, we've had that the same question, and we've had a couple of them that have put a uh, comment on their ad, saying that if you share that you got this, you saw this ad in the guide, you get ten percent off or whatever. Um, we've had a couple of them do that, but the majority of them don't, and most of them, you know, the, they understand that you've got to see something more than one time before you're going to act and buy on it, and they realize that it's just one more in their in their whole package of a marketing and advertising that it's out there with. So we haven't really had anyone, we've had a couple that have said, oh, well, nobody ever saw my ad there and, you know, I didn't get anything from it and not renew, but they're ones that advertised in one place and 
that's it. So it's it's really, we promote it as part of their marketing package as one more place that they're going to get in front of newcomers coming into the community. Steve, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I agree with the other two. I don't, we don't really have a good way of tracking, you know, um, dollars in your, you know, your cash box based on an ad, except anecdotally, like I mentioned earlier, the, the lady who bought the, the front page, she was super happy. With yeah. The result. Um, you know, the like Hogue Hospital has it now. Um, I, I don't think they're looking, you know, they have enough of a presence in the market that everybody knows Hogue Hospital, but it's, I think, just part of their marketing program is to cover all the different media. Um, and, and interestingly enough, in our community, part of the motivation is just so that others don't get the cover and don't get the attention. <laughs> we, you know, we have like four major hospitals vying in the last two years for eyeballs. And uh, one, there's one newcomer that came in and started spending crazy money all over. And uh, so the other ones had to up their game. So I, literally I've already sold the cover to one of the other hospitals for the guy that's not gonna probably come out until September. And they paid back in November for it, just so that they could lock it up. So, you know, it's whatever it is, whatever really motivates them. Um, it's not always, you know, being able to track the actual, uh, you know, the dollars. You know, I like what um, both of you have said, because it basically, you know, like Rhonda, you were saying it's, it's part of that marketing package. And it sounds like, Steve, it's the same for the companies. You are always going to have the company. We all know in the chamber world, you have the company who comes in and they want to, you know, be a member and they want to know for every dollar spent, do I get three dollars on my my mm -hmm. arm? And so we have to become business consultants with them to show them these are ways you can engage. This is a marketing plan. You've got, you've got to have, you know, we talked earlier about is print dead? Well, you can't put all your apples in one basket. So it's about having a variety of ways that you're getting your message out there. And we're providing that opportunity to you. So, uh, yeah, those are the companies I think that really get it. And yeah, and mm -hmm. it's important too to know or to consider because the ad sales people run into this all the time too. Well, how do I track? What's the ROI? How do I, you know, and all that? Mm -hmm. I do it on digitally easier. So it's important to understand that these types of publications, they're not like ready to buy, quote unquote, like in the old days, it used to be a penny saver or a coupon type of thing where somebody clips a coupon, they come in and you can track that. Uh, this is more of an image type of buy. You're, you're presenting yourself and your business amongst the business community of the Chamber of Commerce. And there, there's a panache, there's a certain level of pride in community that you're, you're showcasing yourself. Now, obviously, you know, we'd all want people to buy a front cover and drop, you know, $6,000 or something like that. <laughs> but for a smaller business, you know, when they have a more limited budget, a, a lot of the salespeople will consult with them. We'd love to have you buy a full page, but maybe you're, the, the, the key to advertising is spreading yourself around. So split the mm -hmm. budget among different opportunities to promote yourself. Now, they obviously talk about email blasts for the chamber and that kind of stuff to have different avenues of being visible. It's like um, when you look at uh, that there are five Goodyear blimps up in the air at any one time. You don't look up and go, oh, geez, I got to go buy tires. It's just another impression. And that's kind of the, the thing about these uh, well-executed chamber publications are platforms for businesses to be visible among their peers. And it's a visibility, it's a branding opportunity. And those that recognize that, like Rhonda, you, the, the pet company that takes a two-page spread right at the front of the mm -hmm. book, that's what they're going to do because they recognize that that's the branding opportunity. So it's, it's trickier with print, but it's also more, well, it's, there's a prestige associated with it too, especially among your peers. So I just wanted to share that. Um, Judy, what else have we got? Okay, we have, a, well, somebody brought up a good point, by the way, so I'll just put this out here. We don't need to respond to it, but they uh, mentioned about QR codes, that they're making a resurgence. Um, and especially mm -hmm. COVID, that it might help in measuring ad contacts, like people could scan a code. Mm. That's yeah, a good idea. That was clever. Yeah. Um, another question came up is, can the panelists talk about distribution costs and quantities? How are you getting these guides and publications out to customers after they're produced? And it may be a COVID question, too. <laughs> <laughs> Any one of you. I don't mind sharing. Um, one, we do our Operation Thank You with our members. Um, when our guides are produced. So 
we it's one opportunity we get out to see all of our um, storefront businesses. So we have um, about 570 members and about 350 of those have some type of storefront that we can go visit. And so it gives us an opportunity for our directors, our ambassadors and other business owners that want to get out in front of other businesses to go out and, and share. And this year, especially, it was an opportunity in Texas. We are able to be somewhat open on the most cart and face mask, all of that stuff. But we went out and actually shared. And while they were doing that, they did kind of a checkup on them. Is there anything? The, the chamber has had some resources with PPE and we have some other stuff. So they were asking them, hey, do y'all need masks? Do you need this? You know, is there anything else we can help you with? And gave back some great information. So we were, that was a good resource for us to be able to get. And we take just 10 guides out to all of them and then ask them, if you'd like more, make sure you call the chamber and we'll supply. Our doctor's offices, our banks, our uh, title companies, we normally just go out and deliver a case or so out to every one of those because as they're coming in, buying a house in the community, they give them out. Opening a new account, they give them out, stuff like that. And like you said, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, the table, you know, tabletop books. Uh, the other thing we do is our builders out in the community. We take them cases of them because as people are coming and just looking at, because ours is geared to newcomers in the area, um, they're looking at, you know, if I move out here, what do I have to do? Who do I, you know, is there doctors? Are there, what schools are available? Things like that. So we don't actually do a mass mail out in any sort. Um, but the, the, the local grocery store offered me a space on the bottom rack of a, of a free newspaper. And um, I thought, yeah, I'll stick some in there and see what happens. Before COVID and actually after COVID, I could go by and drop off 30 to 50 guides every week and they would be gone. So, and I mean, they're on the floor, I mean, on a rack, but on the bottom shelf and they were going. Now, a lot of it was when we had, we had a baseball, little league baseball uh, picture on our guide the previous year. And it was very bright and colorful and it had kids on it and people were just picking it up like water. So it, it's been easy to distribute. We distributed all of ours this past year and didn't have any problems, but um, visitor centers in the area uh, put them out for us also. Lisa, Steve, anything to add? Yep, um, sure. Uh, so we, we probably have four ways that we distribute the guide. Well, probably more than four, but four major ones. So we'll give a couple hundred or however many the, the, the uh, cover sponsor wants and they'll distribute them th their, through their means. Um, each chamber member, so that's approximately 600 in our chamber, are, are directly mailed to them. So we use a, a mailing house to do that. And then probably about out of the 15,000, I'd say another 13,000 are hand delivered through a distribution company that either drops them out of business or drops them you know, in front of a residence. And then we'll do some like dropping of boxes to maybe 15 to 20 various places around town. So that might be like the visitor bureau office or um, over at Fashion Island, so the major mall in town or other places where we think, you know, a hotel or something that might want to put them out or hand them out. And so that, and then we, you know, the ones that we hand distribute, um, every new member will get a copy. That's part of our, you know, our, our toolkit thing that uh, our membership coordinator hands them out. So each new member gets one. Um, we hand them out at our events, as I mentioned earlier, at some of the events as a, uh, you know, kind of an advertisement for the chamber, even though, you know, people are paying to advertise our guide. We're using the guide to advertise ourselves as as a you know important and relevant organization in the community, and uh, so so yeah, we got a, like a lot of different ways we put the guide out. So I have I'll just echo. I think Steve, um, our distribution is very similar. We we mailed it out to each of our members. Our advertisers get so many copies, and then we also do the hand delivery. 
and I know Ed was clear to us not to, to, to promote chamber marketing partners, but one of the benefits of, of working with them is that they're able to um, not only bid some of the, the distribution costs and mail outs, the hand delivery with our own people in our own um, areas and our members, but they also have a larger um, network of, of printers and distribution houses so that we're able to get a lower price uh, point. We have that ability to, to have, have more options um, when we're doing that bid. And so uh, that's been really beneficial. And Wanda, to your point, um, we also give them out. So we email all of our realtors in town and we say, hey, the guides are in, you know, periodically we'll say, come pick up a box because they'll take them to open houses. And then again, I mentioned earlier, we do the new resident bag stuffing that we, so those, they go up that in that way. Um, and then it's thinking outside the box. Like we have, um, we, we were the host of the NCAA Division II now, uh, football championship game. So it's like, okay, let's work with getting a copy to all the people who are coming for that. And now we also uh, will be hosting the Byron Nelson golf tournament. So um, just another avenue for people who are coming in that we can, we can distribute them. So we do the traditional ways and then we look outside the box and say, well, where can we, where can we push this out to more people? We had asked quantities and I didn't include that. We, we had been printing 12,000, we reduced it to 10,000, but we'll probably go back to 12,000 next year. Steve, Lisa, what do y'all print number wise? We're, we're at 15,000. Okay. And, I'm uh, trying to remember, Ed, I think I we, just, think we cut it down. I wanna say, was it 10,000 that I we- I think we're at 10,000, yeah. I, I, I remember yeah. correctly. Well, we'll have one last Realistic, question. well, if I can just add, realistically, as you add more guides, it gets a lot cheaper per guide. I mean, the you know, once you get through the, the fixed cost of it, the guide is actually fairly cheap. Yeah, the first one off the printing press is the most expensive. The rest of them are just ink and paper. Um, uh, Judy had to actually move on to mobile so she doesn't have audio, but um, she told me there's one, we'll take one last question. This is coming from Debbie Hagen. Uh, and she asked, do any of the panelists produce produce your pieces in-house, the layout, the sales, et cetera. Um, so let me, I'll just clarify that the, the, all three are producing their publications, quote, in-house, meaning the, the chambers are the publishers uh, and they hire a project management company to manage the project, but the advertisers pay them. And I'll, now I'll just hand it over to you guys. So do any of the panels produce, your public, your, produce the pieces in-house, the layout and the sales and that kind of stuff? We, we do not um, currently. Um, I have in the past. So that there's, uh, you know, I, I um, understand that that aspect. One of the reasons why we went with, um, with, with Ed's team is that we didn't have the resources. And like I said, I've done it before. I mean, we've had our, our salesperson go out and uh, they published it. We had our communications people uh, put the guide together. We did all the editorial. Um, and, and, and it, and you can do it. Um, but it just realized as, as you all know, we're doing a lot of different things. And so if that's your area of expertise, you can go down that path. Um, I've also used a turnkey publication where we gave up a lot of the control of edit some of the editorial and the layout and design, it was way more turnkey. And for us, that didn't really work. So having a hybrid of being able to, um, again, to work with Ed's team, we have a lot more control. We sit down, we talk about editorial. Um, we have someone on our staff now who his uh, skill set is writing. So he took on more of writing the articles. So, so we can kind of take on as much as we want or as little as we want. Um, in, in this, with our relationship with uh, chamber marketing partners. So I don't know if that's helpful or not, but um, for us, it seems to be the best way to go because we get kind of the best of both worlds that we can uh, ha have a lot more control of what the guide looks like, but yet not have to have all of the workload on our staff. And with Rhonda, Rhonda, you're a little different because you do sell your ads yourself. We did. Uh, we did sell our ads. Well, I actually did the ad sales this year because of, of what was going on. It was easier, but 
um, in the past years, we've hired a, a third party person to go out and, uh, but it was somebody that was uh, directly involved with the chamber, knew most of the chamber members and was able to go out and acquire the sales and had that build that relationship with them. Um, but we do that. But like with uh, Lisa, we pretty much control, uh, we work with the writers. Um, in the past, we haven't had anyone in the area that um, really had that skill that was a chamber member in writing stuff. Um, so we've outsourced and, and the people that Ed and them find, I would have thought the lady had lived in our area. She told me things about our area that I didn't even know because she goes out and really scours the internet and finds out. I was like, where's this place? I didn't even know that existed. Uh, so it was great to have an outsider see our area in a different light, but we have total control over what ends up being said and done. So uh, it was nice because she'll send me and, and I send her people to call an interview and things like that. So, yes, we do it in house because we have our finger on every stage stage of the of the game. And even when it gets down to printers, they might find a printer that's a little bit cheaper for us. But if we have somebody that we really want to use, we still control all of that, knowing what our costs are going to be. And uh, so we don't, I, I'm only have uh, one other full-time staff person, a part-time membership person and a part-time um, office person. So I physically don't have, I have no knowledge of putting a book together like this. So that was when we went into it. It was like, I, I don't have the skill set to do it. I need to help. I've gotten more confident in doing things in the last couple of years and, you know, talk back to Chris and Ed sometimes, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a mutual game that we play. Yeah. And uh, Steve, you have the capabilities on staff, but you, you do, you don't do any of that stuff on your own. You do a little bit of writing on your own. Is that right? Yeah, we, you know, I'd say I do more editing than probably writing. So like, for instance, we'll hire out the two main articles and then I'll get them and, you know, I'll edit them down to whether it's, you know, uh, <laughs> grammatical things or, or even just, you know, maybe uh, the focus, I want the focus to be on a member or add members in, you know, because of, you know, why not? I mean, they, it's a free, <laughs> it doesn't cost us anything. The member appreciates it. So things like that, or, um, you know, usually we'll come up with the ideas for the articles and then, and then hand that off. Um, some of the more, the more reference style stuff, we do the editing here. We'll just kind of, I'll just take a day and just go through it because it's not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Probably has delayed our publication in the past just because I can't, you know, wrap my head around actually doing it. But, mm -hmm. but you know, so we do that. You know, we work with uh, the team to, you know, get the directory um, shaped up to the point where we can hand it off and it can be, you know, more processed into the doc, into the publication. Um, ad sales, though, we generally don't do as i said we hire a woman who's done it for us for several years now she's pretty i, I prefer it because I, you know i could probably sell the ads myself you know i like i know all the chamber members and i could start making calls and save the 20 percent commission but you know she does a lot of the follow-up too she makes sure we get mm -hmm. their, their copy we get the payment this and that and so if i don't have to deal with all that stuff i just assume not you know i'd rather just pay her to do it and and it's one less thing on my plate um, and so, and she, you know, seems to do a pretty good job. Occasionally I'll feed her a lead or some, someone will say, Hey, I want to buy an ad. I'll say, okay, well here, call this, you know, our, our sales rep. So it's, uh, but as, you know, as all of you have said, you know, we like the idea that the money comes into the chamber so we can control the funds. We do keep, you know, editorial control to the extent that we want to. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's a collaboration and a quality product that we're you know proud to to send out to our membership and to the public. So. Yeah, we, we do the, you know, we're very similar, Steve, in how we do ours. Um, we actually do have meetings with our sales, with the with our sales uh, team on in-house with the people who are selling advertising um, through CMP. And that's been very beneficial too, because, you know, they, there we have new members who are joining. We we know our members, but we just don't have the bandwidth to to do all of it. And of course, we 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 push it out there too when we're meeting with members. Mm -hmm. 
this could be really beneficial to you and then we'll funnel it to the right person. Um, and the other piece that I, I liked is that we hand, so when, a, when an ad is sold the way that we do ours, um, we have two salespeople from CMP. When they sell an ad, they create an insertion order that goes to our own accounting. And so our, we invoice for it and once the payment's collected, we have a communication system between the two of us, and then, then we pay the commission. But what I like about that is that we keep, um, we're the ones invoicing our members, and we know what's happening, and, and we're communicating with them, too, and we have that as a record in our database, and so... Um, you, you can really customize it again. I know Ed, this is not supposed to be a, a, a promotion for you, but you can really customize as much as you want to do or as little as you want to do. Um, we're, we're all expecting 20% discounts this year. Ed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, on that note, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> gosh, I have a doctor's appointment. Um, <laughs> Well, I, we're coming up on an hour and, and I just wanted to um, thank, wrap up and thank you, uh, all of you, for your time and sharing your information uh, about these publications. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Judy. I do want to share that our next episode uh, on March 11th focuses on the selling aspect of both dues and non-dues revenue. Mark Losh from the Missoula, Montana Chamber of Commerce is going to share his really down-to-earth insights on effective selling techniques from his decades of sales training experience. And I thought his techniques would be really valuable for both dues and non-dues revenue. That's why I wanted to have him on board. He's a very, very sharp guy, and I hope you guys can join us. Thursday, March 11th at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Time, uh, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. I'm Ed Burzminski for Chamber Marketing Partners. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, there will be an email that goes out with a replay uh, of this webinar so you can share it and I'll also have the links in there of the publications. Uh, you'll also be able to connect with our panelists on LinkedIn. We'll have their LinkedIn um, contact information at uh, morenondewsrevenue.com and if you're interested in publications, get in touch with us at chambermarketingpartners.com. Stay relevant and keep on making a difference in your business and in your community. Onward and upward. Are any of these things true at your chamber? Has the board ever said you've got to take the directory in-house? Do staff sometimes say, we should really just do this directory ourselves? Are turnkey publishers giving you grief? Or could your in-house publishing perform better? We're Chamber Marketing Partners and we turn the royalty around. Your members pay the Chamber directly for advertising in their publications. We manage the project for a Chamber, just like a general contractor manages building a house for you. We manage putting a business directory, community guide, relocation guide, visitor's guide, map, together for you as an in-house project. We're Chamber Marketing Partners, www.chambermarketingpartners.com.